China celebrated the 100th anniversary of its ruling Communist Party on July 1st. This anniversary is really a moment for the Chinese Communist Party to be able to look back on how far it's come, from a party that was more or less ruled out as a potential power player, into the driving force behind the country that is now the world's second largest economy, and on pace to be its number one economy. Xi Jinping really wants to take this moment and say, China has arrived. Nobody thought that the CCP would be this successful um, when it was founded in 1921, whether it be in science, technology, in sports, in the economy, in almost every facet, China's stronger than it's been in the past. And in a sense, they're really going to give the U.S. and the West a run for its money. We're in a race with China and the rest of the world for the 21st century. They're not waiting. They're investing tens of billions of dollars across the board. But to surpass the U.S., China will have to overcome several challenges. This is a time when China's economy is recovering from the coronavirus pandemic earlier than everywhere else. And that's left China looking pretty strong. Its economy is expected to grow by 8.5% this year. And it was gaining ground not only in the U.S., but it was adding ground between itself and many of its neighbors. It was able to take advantage of the demand for exports all around the world when people needed PPE, when people needed medical equipment, when people needed computer equipment. It's made big leaps in mobile payments, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and even sending a rover to Mars. So part of the strength of the Chinese state over the last 30 to 40 years has been based on its economy. It's grown so quickly and with a massive population, it had both a large base of labor as well as a huge market for Western companies and other foreign companies to move into China. What we're starting to see now is that some of that economic growth is slowing. Namely, you have a population in China that is skewing older and older. Chinese demographers believe that China really has about a 10, 15 year window here before things start to get really bad in terms of the number of people that you have working trying to support X number of people who are retired. So one of the measures that the Chinese government has taken was to allow Chinese people to have more babies. That's because for the better part of the last four decades, China has restricted most families to only having one child. One of the most important priorities for Xi Jinping has been ensuring that China's periphery is secure. It has Xinjiang, it has Hong Kong, and we've seen very strong controls put in place there over the past few years to really make sure that Beijing's will is first and foremost. Beijing has drawn global scrutiny for its use of surveillance technology to keep an eye on people's activities in Xinjiang and Hong Kong. Beijing has said that national security concerns in Hong Kong have required it to take stronger measures in the city. Chinese authorities have defended the use of surveillance in Xinjiang as designed to promote development and security for locals. They have an overall goal to become the leading country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, and the most powerful country in the world. That's not going to happen on my watch. Biden's rhetoric has actually been very tough since he became president. And he said that genocide is what is happening in Xinjiang. DHS is deeply concerned by credible and growing reports of China's state-sponsored use of forced labor and other human rights violations in the Xinjiang region. Biden has said that in contrast to his predecessor, he wants to work with other democracies to stand up to autocratic governments like China's. It seems like in Washington, Biden has now reflected, captured the zeitgeist there that says China is fundamentally different from us in terms of their values and they're gaining ground on us in a way that we should be very worried about. Over the next 10 to 15 years, Xi has made it very clear that he wants to build self-sufficiency. I think he's recognized that China is too reliant in some ways on the West, in areas like semiconductors and technologies with military applications. And China is definitely doing things in its own way. 
it stepped up control of big and powerful tech companies, such as the fintech giant Ant, and how it handles the user data that it generates. China Communist Party has already been born. It is to make the people of China happy, to make the people of China happy. 确立为自己的初心使命。What Xi Jinping says and wants is for China to be able to keep its prosperity, but also be more ideologically committed to the communist underpinning that first inspired the founders of the Communist Party here in China. And he also wants a country where the people are going to be more loyal to China than they have been in the past.